Right. Good morning or afternoon, evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Roseanne Hansen, and I know a lot of you have been coming to these programs for quite some time. This is us going into what the third year of doing Around the World series. And the first one was plants, and now we're doing animals. This is part three, South America. Some really fun animals that I found. Can't wait to share with you. And remember, we are not doing scientific illustration here. We are naturalists. We're practicing so that when we're out in the field, we can learn to quickly sketch animals and um, grab them with shapes and get the proportions right and be happy with, with sketches for our field notebooks. And so don't angst and, and worry about super details. And we're going to practice together because it's not easy. So let's get started and I'm going to share screen and you should be seeing now my, my screen with the around the world and 80 animals and my notebook. Yes. Wonderful. All right, we're heading to South America. I'm Roseanne Hansen. Welcome. Already um, introduced myself and can't wait to share with you. So, where's your first stop and what's our first fun critter? Well, it looks like we're going north. And this is a fun one. I learned so much. Um, the hardest part is like editing this down. So, this is an electric eel. Such an interesting animal. So, this is not a, a true eel. This is actually a freshwater fish and found in South America across what's called the Guiana Shield. And there are just three species of these. I'm going to turn my camera off because it just gets in the way of what you guys are seeing. Um, so there's only three species in these electric in this particular family of, of uh, fish that can generate electricity. They're huge, look at this, up to 44 pounds, six feet long. Can you imagine um, snorkeling and having that one show up? Ah, um, You can see on it, there's these lateral pits and rows on the top and sides of the head and sort of run down the body as well. And those have electro generators. You can see in the diagram there from Encyclopedia Britannica that they that there are also electric organs and where all that's generating and what are the main ones. And, and so the whole body is a massive electric organ up to 860 volts and first studied in 1775 and contributed to the invention of the electric battery. How cool is that? Okay, there we go. So let's Let's start our sketch here. I'm, I'm doing mine not in the accordion because animals, I need a little bit more room. So I do mine on, on there. And I've started a page here and I'm going to put my map here. Remember when we did um, the last one, this is how I generally do it. And these are just the type look like the locations. That doesn't mean that's only where they're found, but I'll do a map of South America here. And so let's start. Now with the eel, what you want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do, you can do the face um, or the, the whole body. I'm going to do the whole body so I can get in like more of the measurements. So when you, when you sketch in like, okay, here's the body, but let's make sure we get the proportion, right? Let's make sure I can, you can see that. I'm having a, a little challenge with lighting this morning. So let's see if that improves it. I'm doing very faint right now. So do the proportions on the head. So I'm, I'm gonna zoom in a little here and then we'll go back to some of the details at the end, but holding up your, here, I'm gonna put my camera in here real quick. Remember this? where you measure. So I'm gonna measure from, from the nose to the ear there. And now I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, 
five, just about six lengths. So when I sketch this, what I want to do is, okay, so just rough, rough shape here for now. What I want to do is make sure, so let's say I put the, um, let's say I put that, that, that fin here, and that's my, I'm gonna measure this here. It's about that far, you can see there. So one, so, so there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got that just about right. So now I'm going to go add a little more, more detail. It's kind of have as a blunt tail here. I've got this, this fin coming down. It's a little, little longer than that. I'm, I usually do straight to pen, but on these animals, I think it, it really helps me to sketch first with my, with my pencil. And he's got kind of a blunt nose thing going on and got that, that mouth coming in and it sort of goes there. Now the eye placement is pretty high, like right up there. Let's make sure we get that right, very far forward. And then let's get those, those dots. there and then that final those those um fins or or uh that heel at the bottom if you will so there's one two three four kind of five so we've got one two three <laughs> four and then this final one kind of goes up and encompasses the tail. So that's the edge of the body. And so what we want to do now is I've got that going. I want to get some, some details here. I've got, this is electric eel. Oh look, I put um I put four <laughs> three E's. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um we'll just sort of go with that. Um and this is um electrophorus. Electricus, great name. Because we like to, to get our, our genus and our species in there. And this is cool, so up to six feet long. Let's or if, if you want meters, two meters long. Wow. And so it's a freshwater fish. Neotropical means um not the old world, but what we call the new world. Uh, and feel free to, if you need something, ask questions as we go. I cannot monitor the chat from this, um, this window that I'm working on. So just ask your questions out loud. And let's see, so generates up to up to 860 volts. So we'll call it via electric organs. Uh, pits along sides are electro generators. Mm 
Now I'm gonna just start out some, some color. This is actually a pretty, pretty easy one. I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do kind of a dirty yellow wash to begin with. So I've got my little mini, mini watercolor here. Um, those of you know who know, I like just a very simple palette. So I just dirtied the yellow with burnt sienna. And I'm doing the wash because he kind of has this chin thing that's, there's this underlying, looks like yellowish cast. And that'll help us. And then we'll, we'll kind of, um, it's kind of an olive -y, drop in olive -y on top when it, when it dries. So we'll leave that chin and fin the lighter color. And now I want to create kind of an olive. And green this up. Oh, there's some sort of debris there. Let me get rid of that. So I've got greeny green, and then I'm going to drop in red or magenta and a little bit of the burnt sienna to give it more of an olivey color here. Roseanne, the wavy parts on the bottom of the uh, the eel, do they wave and kind of uh, yeah, help? Yeah, part of their locomotion, yeah. Yeah, okay. Good, good point. There, I've got kind of this olive going by using some of the, the dark uh, reds and um, as not, excuse me, not reds, but the, the burnt sienna is a red. Roseanne, when you get a moment, would you be able to zoom in on the images again, please? Oh, sure. Let me finish just this one pass. Sure. Yeah, when I uh, decided to use the the bigger one, it's sort of, uh, or the the full body, it it's a little a little harder to see. And I'm I'm skipping around a little so that it's not a hundred. I'm getting a little dry brush, uh, so I want I I want it to be not not complete. Um, on purpose. So let's zoom in. And all of this will be um, all of this will be on the website so you can catch this catch this later. We're going to let this dry now. See if I can feather that edge just a little bit. And we'll run a line of, of dark there just to denote the, the edge of the body. I didn't want that to be like super solid. So I can come in and feather that a little bit. All right. Well, we're doing great on time. This was a nice, a fairly simple one. Good thing for getting us started. But you can see how this is going to dry with some um, some nice uh, texture in there and interest. So it looks wavy and, 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 and fun. And then I'm going to come back at the end with a, a white gel pen. And I'll, I'll dot in some of those electroreceptors so that, um, uh, or electro electro generators so that so that that is more of a part of it but i can't do it now until it's dry so let's get Rosette, on could you tell us what pigments you have in your palette yes my favorite ones it's just very simple three uh three primaries the true primaries are a magenta which is quinacridone rose a yellow which is areolian and a cyan which is um, uh, 
manganese blue hue. Daniel Smith makes great ones. These are the equivalent from um, green leaf and blueberry, um, but they're they're the same colors. They're the same pigments as as those that I've I've just mentioned. And then I use a dark blue and danthrone blue and a burnt sienna. So a dark red, a magenta, a dark warm blue and a neutral coolish um, blue and a neutral yellow. And I, I have it divided in half. So part of it's clean and part of it's filthy. Um, so you get a, you can get a pure yellow when you need it. Okay. Well, let's move on from Mr. Electric Eel Eel. And where are we going next? So into the heart of Amazonia, one of my favorite animals. I haven't seen one in person. This is the gorgeous maned wolf. Um, Chrysocyon um, bracaris. And in the Guari language, aguara guar, guarsu means lard fox, but actually they are distant relatives of, it is a canid, but they're distant relatives of foxes, wolves, and coyotes. It is endangered, and they're found in, in Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, and parts of Paraguay. And hugely tall legs, uh, and that's because they're adapted to tall grass savannas. And they're omnivores, and I thought this was really cool. They're important seed dispersal agents for uh, Solanum lycocarpum, and that's an, a wolf apple, it's called. Really interesting there. So, you know, they'll eat anything from rodents, you know, uh, mid-sized animals on, on up and plants, fruits, etc. So really cool animal. Let's, how are we going to sketch this beauty? We get this into the screen so we have all of it. There, there you can see the eels drying nicely. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is make sure we got the proportions right. Um, so here's my, here's where my ground's going to be. And let's, the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to measure the height of the animal and it, the proportion between the legs, the body and that neck. So right now I'm going to measure, when I draw, the central part of the trunk. I'm, I'm measuring right now using the thumb measure technique, the head, one, one, two. So the body is, if we do the body like so, and the head here, I'm just putting little tiny dots here. Don't worry yet about, about everything. Um, fitting in. I'm just checking my proportions right now. So I want to, I've got this, here's this big shoulder circle. Okay. Let's, let's look at that. And then the body extends out. It's long and lean. And we've got this, this shape like this. And now, now that I've kind of got this body here, I'm like, okay, that's that's a that's good. Um, let's let's look at this other triangle shape of the of the the head and here, and we're going to put is that long enough? Yeah, I just want to very roughly put in there, and it's so if the head and neck. I'm measuring one, one, two. So if that's the head and neck, one, two. Yeah, I, that's right. Now let's make sure those ultra long legs are, or we got the right. So that leg, those legs I'm measuring are about as long as from the tip of the nose to that first elbow. So that's, if that's going to be his nose and that first well, it's not really the elbow, but um, there, then that's how long those legs are. So I got that right. So that's what you wanna do. Measure a leg 
and then find something to proportionally check it against. Now let's go back to the shapes. So we've got the, the leg coming out here. I guess that is so. And then a long, long shape here. And then another, another shape there, a little, little bit there. Let's just check the, the other leg here, just lightly, slightly canted forward there. You can see the, how that comes down, very slender. And we'll add the fluffies later. Right now I'm worried about shapes. So here's his hip. And get that, that shape down there. Okay, maybe a little bit farther down and it's stepping forward. It's about to do a double register is what it's doing. Got a lot of marks here, so we'll be able to pick which one works. And then long stride back here. This one feels so very like out there. Going with shapes, shape, shape. Can't really see the leg through the tail there. So let's get that tail shape in there. Just, just watch your shapes. All right. And coming up again, let's get that butt. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a shape here of I'm gonna go ahead and I want to get that that main, oops, um, I'm kind of drawing at a weird angle so you guys can see, but I think what I, I'm gonna consider the main a shape. So I'm gonna get that right. So I'm kind of putting that in there as a marker. And then let's get the, now we need to get the, the head, which is actually kind of a, he's kind of a pinhead. <laughs> Um, there's kind of two parts to it. The, imagine the skull and the long nose. Coming up, so remember to feel that out. Here we go. And then you've got an ear coming up here. They have a very strange shape. Um, remind me a lot of, of African wild dogs um, in the big ear thing going on. And so you've got their brow coming down. And this is where we're going to need to place the eye. So I'm just sort of teasing this out till I'm I'm comfortable with the, the shapes. Getting rid of the, getting rid of stuff when I'm I'm not not needing a lot of detail there. Okay, now let's get some of these fluffies in. So we're going to not do a super smooth back. Oops, getting too exuberant here. So 
because I, I just want to remind me when I'm coloring that I, I want to show the these beautiful whorls. So I'm I'm kind of considering these as shapes, the um the fluffies. Now the the legs the the long fluffy fur ends at the legs. It gets more more uh, smooth coat. Just pull that out a little bit. And very skinny guy, right? So it's okay to have to keep. Now I'm gonna definitely got a lot of kind of fluff in here. And I want to show that. So I'm gonna come down. Don't try to do every hair. Just maybe do a few marks to show like so. And hopefully those will show through in our paint. And we can always enhance that with the paint. Okay. It's uh, so tempting to just sort of keep diving in and doing more and more and more, but, you know, I just want to do a quick capture. I'm happy with with the proportions and the the coloring right now we've got the the mane coming in okay stop fussing with it now and start getting some details don't want to forget that so now we have our maned wolf love that oh but only distantly related to Hannes Lupus. Give me enough name for the uh, room for the name. Chrysocyon. Brachyurus. It's endangered. This is a, he's a canid for sure. He's an omnivore. And a seed dispersal agent. <laughs> for I still land them. species. Okay, so I'm going to lay down a, um, I need to get a wash down uh, of that lighter. And oh, before they do that, I'm going to remove some of the. Rosanne, do you know if they hunt in packs or are they just a little family? Oh. Unit? Good question. Um, oof, we need to look that up. Uh, if if they're solitary or uh, it sounded like they were more solitary, but I will need to double check that. Good question. Or if anyone wants to quick look that up while I start, or I'm going to make a, a a warm, nice warm reddish yellow with the um. Burnt sienna dropped right into a a nice yellow, and that that creates just that undercoat that we want. And I'm going to go 
pretty light because I want to, I want layers to come up um, so I can darken and, and, and show um, all that lovely fluff. So right now I'm just, I'm trying to pay attention and not um, color in all of this tail, for example. Anyone find it? Um, are they are main wolves uh, solitary? They're primarily solitary. Ah, thank you. See, it's really great uh, as naturalists that we let's remember to leave the ears inside of the ears white there. As naturalists, also his chin, um, that we ask questions. I mean, that is just the key to what we're doing, we're learning. So if we were lucky enough to be observing these guys in the wild, we would be, that would have been the perfect question to ask. And then research it, look it up, learn it. Um, that's fantastic. Um, I'm gonna do, uh, I think we've got some grass going on here. And so he's stepping here. This foot has just left that point right there. And that's a classic double register um, that is, is so typical of predators and prey. And I'm gonna throw in some darks here. I wanna create, I wanna get his feet done before we move on. So I'm, I'm creating a, a dark with, you create darks black even with the dark blue burnt sienna and dark blue. So you can see there getting a nice, nice dark going. Okay. And so let's see, try to get, get his legs. Uh, just black, black legs. And it just, it's just a little modeled here. So not up, not up here. It looks like it's, we've got more of the, um, and here we've got more of the burnt sienna-ish. But I am going to darken in here because that's where his butt's going up. <laughs> I'll be able to refine that a little better, so let's get the rest of his legs. So it looks like it just sort of grades up like that. And it might take me a couple of passes to get the, the dark how I want it. Um, whoop. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, my camera's being, there we go. No. Okay. So get this down here. So in the field, we would have, you know, done this with our, our pencils and then, you know, worked on our color later, which works great. So what we want to do here is I'm going to pull I want to pull some of the reds in to see how it it becomes much more reddish. So 
So you can see how I'm working the colors here. So this will take multiple layers and passes, that's okay. To get this, it's a little too wet there because I want to keep that nice and modeled. What so, is the climate like where he lives? So it's um grassland savannas, uh, so interforest, temperate forest savannas. Um, so they're they don't need really thick fur, but I'm sure that, that it can be cold in the evenings. So that's why he's got more of a coat than, than say you would expect in a, you know, a rain, it's, it's not a rainforest, it's temperate. So there you can see how I'm adding colors and keeping, trying to keep it modeled here. Oop, let me finish that front leg and then we're going to move on because um, I can, this will be something I'll have to be working on. I'll finish later after it dries, but I'm, I'm happy with the, um, what I'm, what I'm getting so far. You see how I'm blending, trying to get this to blend. What I like about my burnt sienna here is it's it's very movable on the on the paper. You can pick it up and and move it um, quite easily. So we'll we'll get some more of that in here. So we get some of that that mane, if you will. And then we'll want to go in and I, I need to add his. Uh, dark black mane, but I'm going to wait on that because we're going to move on. But you can see the process there. As it's drying, uh, it's, it's looking really nice. Let me wipe the palette. So as we move on to our next critter, so that's that's going to look really, really nice. And we'll throw in some green on that. Oh, that needs to dry. In fact, I'm probably going to have to put a blotter on that to turn the page. I keep scraps of paper because I'm going to need to turn the page, but um, I'll have to put something over it so it doesn't smear. All right. Well, let's keep moving because as we know, we're doing eight animals per session. So that means um, maybe about 15 minutes per, per critter. So who's next? Well, this time we're going um, out toward Brazil. We're kind of in Brazil there, but it's a it's a huge country. So, but out toward the the coast and this amazing creature, which <laughs> is the largest rodent. Uh, so this it's incredibly huge. Um, the capybara, and it is in the cavi family, it's called, so related to guinea pigs. And so up to four feet long and 146 or so pounds. <laughs> That's just amazing. They're highly social. And so groups as many as, as 100, but um, typically 10 to 20 animals. And uh, it's been hunted, is hunted for its meat and the hide. And uh, also it's very fatty. So um, that's, that's considered a very useful uh, for, for, from, by, the, by the people who hunt them. So, oops, no. So let's, let's draw a capybara. I'm uh, sharpening my pencil here. Okay. But I've got to, oh, the wolf, I was so interesting. The wolf, um, I'm gonna have to move my camera. So hold on, bear with me. 
it's I used a lot of water, so it's bleeding through this. Um, apparently, this is not my favorite paper. I had to use a paper that I'm not super fond of. But you know what? We just cope with what we have and we learn to adapt. So, all right. Sorry for the shakies here. So the capybara, I think what I'll do is I need to make sure I've, I kind of mark mark the where 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 the 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 base is. So this is just just to keep me on track here, and then. Let's get some, lay down some basic shapes and then remember to do our proportions. But so the basic shape here is, we, we wanna get his, that rear part of the body. You see how I'm just sort of feeling out that as a shape. And then he's he's kind of curled. So you wanna get the, the head part. And what's interesting about these is they have these massive heads. So it's going to be like way different than, than you maybe originally will, will sketch. And so here's, here's my head shape. And then we've got this body part going down. And then here's another shape here because we're kind of connecting. So how does that feel proportion wise? Well, let me measure his from his nose to the top of the the ear in the back. I'm measuring with my pencil. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to count from the nose. One, just two in a bed. So if I go, if this is where I'm going to place his ear, then if I go there, then one, two, let me did, did I do that right? Let's see, one, one, two. So measure one, so there's one. I, I'm a little long on the, on the body. So I'm going to pull it in a little bit. And that's that's always good to check. So other shape is let's get let's get this these kind of modified fat triangles that that is going to become the the feet. All right. Great. Okay. So that comes up there. We've got the body coming up. That's good. It's going to come around like so. The head's going to come down and you're going to have a little bit of a sweep here. And now let's feel out that schnozzle. There's this little lippers. Think giant guinea pig. There's the chest. Gonna have some little chest furs. Then this this leg comes out, and we've got three toes showing. This one's a little bit obscured. Okay, so we've got, we wanna keep this a little furry. That's why I'm not doing like super solid lines here. 
But what I'm going to do here is just suggest the way the body is turned, like, like so. So you do the kind of the nap of the fur. And then here we've got his chin. Let's do the eye and ear placement. So we've got the upper ear or the back ear. They're kind of got this wavy thing going. Maybe a little bit big, but I think we can work with it. Okay, so that, and then make sure we get this fairly high up the top. Do a little, kind of like a figure eight at first to get that shape. I find that the ears and eyes placements are so important. So there, let's, that's pretty good. And now that eyeball, that eye is about halfway there. So you want to mark the brow till you're happy with it. Go real light. Then start. There we go. I'm 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 happy with that. That placement is good. If you don't like it, if it if it looks crappy, do it again. Those are just absolutely key when we're doing these, these critters is the placements of eyes and ears. You get them wrong and everything just goes haywire. So don't forget to emphasize this little mouth here. And then that, the, the nose, nose hole coming up. Okay. I think that's good. Um, and then we're going to just, don't forget to just give it a little, so he's not floating totally. Um, that's great. So I'm super happy with that. Um, so let's get some labels. And this is our lovely happy Mara. Anyone seen one in the wild? I've seen one in a zoo, but not in the wild. Uh, wouldn't that, it would be so fun. Yeah. There's They're something similar that I I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. I just one at a time. There's something similar, neutrino or something. I forgot what it's called. Nutria. Saw, Nutria? Yes. Yeah. Similar. It's like a giant rodent up in Oregon. Definitely. Very similar, isn't it? And Roseanne? So yeah. Do they have these in the Central American tropical rainforest, Costa Rica specifically? Oh, I forgot to put the range on there. They're pretty. They're, I, I believe they're fairly widespread. They're not super uh, limited. Um, I saw one in Costa Rica at Finca La Salva. Yeah, um, about thirty years ago. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure they're pretty pretty darn widespread. So we've got a lot of cinnamon colored animals. This is interesting. Um, I suspect, you know, these are more in the temperate forests as well, um, hence the coloration so they can blend in with the, with the grass. So I just really just need to do a wash of this, of this, this under color, this sort of cinnamony. It's funny how it all, they all sort of starting with similar colors. And, and this helps because um, I'm, I can see my pencil marks to help with the, um, the pellage. So as I, as I do the pellage, I'll be able to do some strokes that approximate which way the the fur goes so that uh, what did you use to make the cinnamon color again? I just use my I have a neutral yellow, which is Aurelian, 
and I drop in a little burnt sienna. It's like my go-to for creating um, grass color or this these these lovely undercoats for these for these critters. So now I can go and grab some more burnt sienna and 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 cinnamon up his his coat a little bit. So it's going to be very wet. And it might take me a few, few times to get what I want. I don't want like a solid color. Does he have a tail? Oh, good. I don't think they have um, big tails. No. Um, it's funny. All the royalty-free images I could find, I couldn't see any any butts. They were all taken head on. Um, I only use uh, you know the royalty free images. I'm pretty sure they don't. It's just a nice little round run. Yeah, that's that's my impression too. And those ears will be actually quite a bit darker. And I want to charcoal up his his face a little bit with a, a dark. And his feet have more of that, you know, almost a blackish charcoal -y color. Well, it's probably the skin showing through. So what I could do is go like really dry off my my brush here and splay it out and and try to get some palette strokes and I I can probably come in when it dries off a little more and do more directional strokes so I get that look see it's moving around a little you just have to experiment until it gets just the right consistency. There, see that? Um, I got some, some stripes. just using dry, dry brush. And if I have time, which I'm running out of time, but that's okay. You drop in, so I've got some burnt sienna here already. If I drop in the dark blue, it's going to create a, a nice charcoal-y color. I don't want it too dark because then that, it's not super dark, here, I want, want it to fade. Well, he's kind of fun to do. All right, I'll have to catch catch these on the details on my second pass. But you kind of get the get the picture now how I'm Don't be afraid to use your fingers too. Um, and what I didn't get is is maybe some of this dark in here to show. Uh, kind of a little more depth. All right. Well, I'm going to move on. We'll worry about his eyes and ears after it dries because it's really wet. But it's actually looking 
looking pretty good. Um, let me see if I can lighten it just a little. It's not as dark in person as it's showing right now. <laughs> it's very bubbly, but I think he's turning out pretty well. Got too much on the cheek here. But what's so great about burnt sienna and endanthrin is it's very movable without ruining your, your um, painting too much. All right. Well, we'll be going next. This is fun. Um, very fun. Okay. Now we are in Peru, in the um, um, rainforests of Peru. And this is such a gorgeous animal. This is the poison dart frog. There are many species of poison dart frog. Um, this particular one, Aranatomeia amazonica, is in, it's widely scattered, but in very specific populations. So Northeast Peru, Southeast Colombia, Guiana, French Guiana, and the mouth of the Amazon in Brazil. And they're not big. They're only about um, 16 to 19 millimeters long. And that coloring, that bright coloring with, with especially the oranges and reds like that, is it's called aposematic. And that is a signal to predators that they are toxic. How do they get toxic? Well, there's, they're not sure. Scientists aren't sure. They think there's a hypothesis that they sequester chemicals from the food they eat. So ants, centipedes, mites that have toxins, but they can actually um, sequester it in their bodies so that if something eats them, they're poisonous. Um, and here is like, I had to like re reread this part multiple times to just, I was blown away. The adults will lay their eggs in, in moist places. And then once they hatch, the adult will piggyback the tadpoles one at a time to a suitable water source, a safe place. And this particular species, it's in the throat of bromeliads where water gathers. Now, I just think that's like incredible evolution. How the heck did that one happen? So love it, love it. Um, let's... Let's capture this really cool. Now, the shapes on this are critical. So what we want to do, I'm going to put it down here. Oh, I didn't add my details for Mr. Um, Capybara. I'm going to have to come back to that. Um, I got all involved in doing his fur and forgot the details. So let's do our shapes here now. Here's Would you be able to zoom in on the frog again, please? Oh, yeah. OK. I'm just getting my my body in there. Okay, that'll help. Yeah, because this is a a challenging one. So, main body here. Actually, I I got that a bit wrong. So this is why I you got to get your proportions right. So, main body here, but the other shape is is the kind of the head head and shoulders bit but there's other shapes on it that we have to to look at as well so the other shapes we want to just sort of get positioned You just get your your general shape. Don't worry too much about details yet of of those those leg shapes. So we're going to tease out the details. But this is getting our our placements in. So that so that we're we've got our, we're, we're making sure we're getting our proportions right. So the other shape here that we want to worry about are these eye orbit circles. All right, let's then tease out now I'm I'm, I'm I think I'm I'm happy with that. 
because we're we're coming along here, we're going down here. Now we're joining the leg there. Okay, that's good. And then, yeah, that that nose shape feels good. And we're gonna come down like like so and join that arm. I'm getting rid of some of my my shape marks. Now I've noticed this is not quite big enough, so I think that's better. All right, now that's looking like a poison dart frog. So when I'm looking at the shapes here, I've got this, this is good here. Then I've got a toe coming out and a toe, long thin toe coming here. And bring this here up to the crease. And then we've got another part here. So his belly is going to come in like so and create this other crease. Good. Okay. Now this one, tease that out. Go around. We've got a toe coming out here. And I think what we've got is a another toe. I'm going to go here. And then this, oop, didn't quite get that shape right. Just watch the shapes. Don't think about legs at this point there. And then shape here. There we go. And I think we've got a pretty good basis for our poison dart frog now. Now I'm gonna lay in, I wanna lay in the, um, the black. So that we get that right. Because the aposematic is so important. Oh, first I want to put in this this eye here. Okay. So we've got black coming up here. And it goes right over the eye and out to the nose. And then down here under the eye, because you've got some yellow there. And then it comes down here and joins there with the uh, right above the uh, arm, front arm. I'm, I'm, this is to help me when I do my painting. So here I've got another one coming. You can follow the contour here. Then we go around and sort of create a globe here. And then we have a loop. And we can we can edit these as, as needed, but um, I think that's good for now placing. And then he's got a circle here. 
and then the don't forget to oh uh one more one more black here and then we've got circles so just do some circles to remind you circles and speckles on the legs Nice. Okay. Uh, got this sort of second, this arm coming up here is very indistinct. So, and then I want to give this a little more definition. And that is showing that some toes happening here. Okay. And again, circles. So what we want to want, oh, do first I want to get him named because I've been neglecting that. So this is poison dart frog. I'm gonna leave space, remember to write information about our capybara. And this is the genus Ranitomea. A lot of um, frogs start with ran, rana. Amazonica. And um, so they are uh, found in rainforests. Tiny, so 16 to 19 millimeters long. A posematic, oops. coloring signals, toxic. Now I'm going to clean up some of the areas that need to be orange and yellow. And we're going to lay down a, whoops, first I'm gonna clean my palette. How's everybody doing? This is, these are fun. So fun. I uh, really wanna get um, to back to the, to Peru. We've only been in the, um, the, the lower parts of, of Peru and haven't been to the Amazon uh, anywhere in South America. So I'm, I'm super excited about sometime going back. So I'm gonna do that bright yellow. Just noticed, I'm gonna do a bit of a, a correction here. It doesn't have that much of a, of a a chin, if you will. So let's get that bright yellow. Do the males and females look different? Oh, good question. So are they sexually dimorphic? That's a good question. Um, nothing indicated there were differences uh, 
in in the sexes. It also um, the brief article I uh, referred to did not indicate it, it, if it was the male or the female that moved the eggs. Now I'm I'm painting yellow because this is going to become orange, um, but but this will help give me that really bright under. And then I need to be kind of really see where it grades into the the blue. In fact, before I get any messier, I'm going to underpaint the blue with the bright cyan. So do your lighter colors first, those things that you want to really show through. Whoa. Being really careful not to pull that blue up and integrate with the yellow because otherwise I get green. Do you know, since they are poisonous, do they have any predators? Good question. Um, I imagine somebody can eat them, but possibly not. Possibly birds, maybe mammals are more affected by by the toxicity, uh, many birds can eat ants and th things that are much more toxic. So that would be a good research question, wouldn't it? Got a little bit of green in there. So things like capsaicin in chili peppers a lot of birds can eat that, but mammals don't like it. Okay. Oh, I'm, you can tell I'm like really kind of getting into this probably too much. Um, I, and I'll, I'll take, spend all my time on here because doing the colors is so much fun. Um, this is going to be orange, but I'm, I'm doing the yellow undercoat because it's going to help make it pop. Perhaps owls, since they regurgitate. Ooh, that's a good. What owls, though, are in rainforest? I don't know the answer to that one. Um, actually, I just read a book about owls, <clears throat> and amazingly, they are in the rainforest. Uh, I had no idea. Me either. That's cool. Boy, specialists, right? Um, there's, oops, I don't want this to be really watery, so. Um, I'm pretty sure that they do not have predators. I mean, and if okay. you think about it, having aposomatic coloration, if you had a predator, it would defeat the purpose of your poison because it would be like, Advertising, hey, snack over here, you know? <laughs> Good point. So I'm pretty sure in, in the herpetology classes I've taken that yep. oh, I've never good. learned about anything that can eat them. All we learned about was how deadly they are. That, like one frog can has enough poison to kill quite a few people. And of the different species, um, it indicated, you know, some are more toxic than others. Right, yeah, like the um, Phyllobates, the Phyllobates ter terribilis is supposed to be the most toxic one on there, um, bright yellow usually. There, uh, if you Google um, poison dart frogs, it's really interesting how the, the well, loads of different, uh, color families. Uh, there's some there blues and yellows and reds. Yeah. And there's even sometimes within a species, there's like regional color variants that are quite different. And they're 
they can be kept in captivity at which point they tend not to be toxic because their diet oh. is generally like fruit flies in captivity. Oh, so, so that, that gives some credence to the hypothesis that they're- Yeah, I, I quite- thought that established um, thing for a while, but back when I volunteered at the Atlanta Botanic Garden with their amphibian program, I would be taking care of some display terrariums. And I remember one guy, freaked out and was very concerned for my safety as I was reaching into the Phyllobates terribilis terrarium to fix something in there. He thought I was going to drop dead right in front of him. Oh, because, well, <laughs> unless there's a, there's a knock on it. <laughs> there's all this signage on the terrariums about how deadly they're the deadliest frog in the world. And, oh. and I was casually reaching in there to fix something in their terrarium. <laughs> this guy swooped in to rescue me from myself there. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was creating the orange by layering over the yellow. It would works better if you let it dry. So I'm, I'm gonna let this dry. I'll come back with another pass. Um, but layering the magenta over your yellow will give you a really nice bright orange. Um, better than mixing it in the pan. So often the um, glazing will will produce much better, uh, brighter colors. So I have to let that sit and then I'll have to come back and do the blacks later because that's going to okay. take a long time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, if anybody's interested, the San Francisco Zoo says that the only natural predator of the poison dart frog is a thing called a fire-bellied snake. Whoa. Okay, no, that's awesome. Okay, moving on. Nope. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for that in information. I'm going to write that down. Uh, what was that again? I was muted. I think it's. Um... Let's see. It's a thing called a fire-bellied snake. I heard, okay, um, I'm to look that up. That sounds so cool. And there is a, there, you know, they do list a, um, a genus and species, but I wouldn't go through saying it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no worries. Okay. That's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna research that. Okay. Where are we going next? We are. here <laughs> um this is so much fun um hold on let's see this is one of the, the smallest felines uh smallest in south america for sure look at how small this guy is this is the cod cod i've never heard of of them leopardus uh guigna I'm not quite sure how to say that one for sure, uh, but only like 15 to 20 inches long and four to five pounds. So smaller than some house cats. Um, super interesting. It's a very vulnerable species threatened by logging and, um, and found in uh, primarily central and southern Chile in the temperate Andean rainforests and is impossibly cute. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> See, I got distracted. So my well, side is 16 pounds. So <laughs> it is my... this is like kitten size compared to that. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I'm sharpening, uh, getting a nice sharp tip so I can do light sketches. What I'm going to do, uh, cause it's just faster. Um, but feel free, of course, you know, as you work on yours, if you want to tackle the whole thing, but you know, it would take me all day to, <laughs> to do all the spots. So I think I'm, oops, sorry, focus on the face. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of put it right in here so I can write on this side. And that'll let me at least capture that, that cute little stubby, stubby nosed face. And, um, 
and there. So what I'll do is I need a, a kind of a bounding circle for ears, mouth, face. So first I'm, I'm just sort of giving myself a, a, a so you can see that barely, barely. Maybe, maybe I need to. Dark. Roseanne, what what lead pencil are you using? It looks like a two H or something very light. It's is it's an HB. HB. Wow, my H, your pencil line is so light. Oh, I'm doing it, and in, uh, I'm intentionally doing it very light, um, so that I can. Right now, I'm just feeling out a shape. And as I as I go, I'm going to press harder as I'm more comfortable with with the um, with my proportions. So he's got us. Remember, we get we need to get the schnozzle and and kind of mouth is down here, and then I'm going to pull the cheeks out here. But in this way, I am making sure I've, I've got a uh, proportions that I like. I'm also gonna mark here because I'm, I'm gonna make make it, you know, like he's coming around this, this, this rock here so that it doesn't look like he's just a head floating. Um, and, and so the getting this shape in here, I'm gonna actually anchor it with the, the nose there and then build from the nose, which is kind of critical for the, sh the 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 proportions and shape of this guy. So stubby little nose, really stubby, and then those eyes are really low down. So get that eye shape in there to really anchor your his big eyes. I'm pretty close together, look. So work on that carefully. Is it, and remember, big, big round eyes, even though it's going to um, fill in a bit. So see how I'm feeling that out. Does that, does that work? Is this good? I think so. Get that intensity there. Darken it a little. Really close together, short nose. Then he's got these whisker lines that come down and define the edge of the cheek. And they're really small. And then here's your, your whisker dots. And then little lips. See, that's working. And then we have the little chin, just do some dots because it's white. And then here's your, he's got these little cheek pads here, little fat face right there. So you see how we're, we're teasing out the shape here. Yep, definitely that pokey round face now. Placing the ears is really important. Um, and they're they're like, they're not pointy, they're kind of C-shaped. And it I'm I'm gonna use, oh, let's place, you know what will help more. I think I didn't quite get that right. I'm gonna place the M over the I first. Um, so it's got that kind of tabby catty ah uh, M. And then that points right to the base of the ear. And so we've got kind of dark, dark tufts defining the edge of that. And these, these, oh gosh, I just, you, you want to get your, your kind of 
tufts in there. Um, and his So now we've got here, we can just suggest the body going back because we're not, we don't really have the information to do that. In fact, what I'm going to do is actually create, it should really, there should be, it's going to look better if we, we put a paw here and that one stepping forward. And I'm really just suggesting with the fur here. I'm not quite right. I'm gonna, should be right about here. And I'm gonna keep that fairly I'm just gonna go vague there and focus on that face and putting in some more of the markings here. So it's this M that really kind of defines these cat, cat faces. Okay. And don't get all like, you know, too much, worry too much about super detail on this. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be good. Get those kind of really roundy eyes there and see how widely spaced the ears are. So I'm going to be sure to name this cutie. Oh, and let's get that dark, don't forget the dark nose that, that does really define. Roseanne, it's hard to see in the picture, but what does the tail look like? Yeah, they're not super long, so it's about um, a third as as long as the the maybe a little maybe half as as long in the body, and it's it's fairly thick all the way to the end. That's almost the end of it right there. So they are good climbers. Um, so they do climb trees for prey. This is called the cod cod. And this is Leopardus. And I, I let's see, Wigna, I'm not sure what that signifies, means. Um, possibly a region. So it's the smallest feline in South America. Felid, we'll call it a felid. And so the tail is about eight inches. There we go. So it is about, about half. So up to uh, 20 inches long. Four to five pounds. And um, temperate Andean rainforests.
It's interesting that um, you talked about the M on his face. I uh, listened to a YouTube um, uh, program about cats, and it said um, that all tabbies have that M. Yes, they do. And um, so they're really kind of showing their wild ancestry, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Uh, many of the patterned cats have, have the M. And again, we need a, a, a kind of a cinnamony wash. So I need to get like an orangey, orangey wash, and then I'll be adding browns. I'm gonna water this down quite a bit. Um, don't want to fill in the ears have a lot of the the white and then around his nose uh down below the little cheeks and um chin are are white so i want to reserve that And then I that it helps to have have kind of brought the foot in both feet so we can help define the chin. Just sort of suggesting the body on the side here. I I could improve this even more if I kind of brought oops brought my um rock up. That will help. Kind of with that um, the way it looks. That I dropped that into the the it's bleeding a little bit more than I wanted should. So to do a really nice brown, let me show you a nice little trick. Here's a fun, um, to get a really pretty brown in a true primary palette, you mix all three of your primary colors. And it's so counterintuitive. And keep adding until you get to the brown that you want. See there? So if I want to go in and really there I wanted a little bit darker. So that's good. Um, if I want to warm that up a little bit, I just add a little bit of the magenta um, and yellow. There, I like that. And so if I get this a little damp, I can drop in and, and create more of the, the pellage look and fill in the that M a little better. There, that's enhancing the, that that um, the kitty look, <laughs> if you will. Get some stripes on the side. Try not to fill in the um, the white. You want to reserve that white.
think it's going to take a little bit more work here, but I'm going to let it dry for a bit and then and then come back. If I do much more, I think I'm going to fill in his face and lose, you know, I'll come in with some nice blacks um, to shine up the eyes and fill in that mouth. But I'm going to let it sit for now um, so we can move to our next critter. But it, that was such a fun one. And now, of course, we had to go up to the Galapagos. And of course, the giant Galapagos tortoise, really cool animal. And interestingly, there are two, this is showing two subspecies of the giant Galapagos. And we're gonna find out morphologically why they're different and, and how they're different. But notice mostly look at the neck and then look at the shape of the shell. So, uh, Telenoides niger is the Galapagos giant tortoise. It's the largest living tortoise up to 900 pounds. They've, they've been, been measured um, and six feet long. And I chose the photo with the people because that really helps show how huge these are. Um, they're the largest terrestrial ectotherms, meaning they they don't really thermal regulate. So they they regulate their temperatures in the by, by being in the sun and, and then leaving the sun when they get too hot. So they move like lizards, um, are ectotherms. Uh, they live up to 100 years in the wild and have been known to live 175 years in captivity. And they're native to seven of the Galapagos Islands. And that shape subspecies and populations. In the humid highlands, um, they are larger with domed shells and short necks. So remember the one that, that was the shorter one on the right. And then in the dry lowlands, they're slightly smaller with saddleback shells. And so you can see this lump here, the, the, the slump here, and really long necks. Um, not sure, they think it's the longer neck for reach for, for, for foliage because of the drier lowlands, they're reaching up into plants, or are they used for, as these guys are showing, probably sexual um, competition, because I think those are both males, I'm pretty sure, um, tortoises, males have this protrusion on the plastron. So really cool. Let's draw these guys or choose which one you want to draw. Um, oh, let me make that bigger. Whoa, okay. I'm gonna go with him because he's very dramatic, some good shapes and I'm, I'm going to put it right in here. Now, one of the things you have to do is make sure you got your proportions right. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is just give myself a, a marker. That's, is that where I'm going to put the head and then, okay, here. And then I'm going to just give, give, uh, estimate a shape here, make sure I've left enough room on the, um, on the paper, let's make sure I, I get it right. Um, so I'm going to measure using the, um, if you'll remember the, hold your pencil up, measure that neck. So from the, the top of the nose by the eye, all the way down, I'm gonna measure all the way down to where it is just coming out of the, the shell. And then I'm going to measure a Ross from that protrusion, that neck is almost as long as the whole base shape of the shell. So if I measure like so, then I want to make sure from that point, so 
this is too short, really. So I need to make that just a little taller to get that proportion right. And that's that's why we we do this. Is that really helps us get that crazy proportion because his neck is really extended. Okay, now I'm going to tease out these shapes. Okay. Don't forget to leave that little hump. And this almost comes down to like, it's like a little skirt. And then we've got, you see the, the bottom scoots. So I'm teasing it out here. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm liking these shapes. Now let's get those leg shapes. Placing them really, uh, it's quite exaggerated. And this one, ah, uh, I just, oh, I don't have quite enough room here. I think I can pull this back. I'm dead, like barely going to get his toes in. Oh, I just snuck that in. And then this leg is really extended because he's lunging at the other. And it's, it's really just a, a blocky shape here. Get his toes. And then, you know, don't worry too much about super details here. I'm going to do kind of a dotted line here and then showing where the, the shell comes down. As it, as it sort of blends into the, you've got the, the folds of the body here and the shell coming around. But right now you've got, you can see the, the plates here. And I'm, I'm not going to spend a ton of time trying to get the plates exactly right. Um, I'm just going to, to do some approximations. But feel free to take as much time as, as you like to tease out those details. I'm wanting to keep keep moving and do just do a quick quick capture here.
And I'm just, right now, I'm just wanting to, you know, I'm just going to show the, the texture of the scales here. I'm not going to try to draw every one. This is just quick sketch, quick sketch. It is claws. Interesting claws, aren't they? Remind me of elephant feet. And let's get that face. So great, great face, isn't it? Let's so, oop, try to try to draw this so you can see it. Um, okay, so flat head up to a very pointed there, and then he's gaping. Wink. Way down. There's a tooth of there. And then that eye is way the heck up. Like so. So strange looking. There. And I, I think we've you know, captured the essence here. You could spend all day <laughs> doing all the wonderful details, of course. So cool. But I think we've got a really good capture that's showing the species. So what we have here is the Galapagos giant tortoise. Kelona, Kelonoides. <laughs> Niger. Niger meaning dark or black. That's interesting. Um, so, largest tortoise. up to 900, I'm just going to round it, 900 pounds and six feet long. And then we're looking here as subspecies. Um, I should have written down which subspecies this is. We can look that up. Um, but this one is from the lowlands. And we have a saddleback. These ones are actually called saddleback. So that oh, works. Nice. Okay. I was going to look up at the what the genus. I oh, mean, not the genus, the the subspecies name too. But so we'll call this the saddleback. Excellent. So, and um, long neck. Okay. Um, we're going to move on. We're running short on time um, because I've got, well, we've only done two, we've only done six. We've got two more to do. So I'm happy with that sketch and can, can add my color later. And we're going to now head farther south into the Patagonia. One of my favorite places on earth. Two, yay! Of course, we had to do one of the camelids. This is the guanaco, 
Lama Guanaco, and it is closely related to the Lama, Yama. And there's one other called the Vicuña, which lives at higher elevations, and I think is slightly smaller. Can't quite remember which is smaller. Um, they're three to four feet at the shoulder and two to 300 pounds. Males are slightly bigger. They have really, really thick neck skin, which protects them from predators like the puma. Um, they're grazers. They eat grasses, shrubs, herbs, etc., and they digest similar to ruminants with a with a where it settles in a, a special digesting chamber, stomach, and and but they're not true ruminants, or they're not related, I should say, to what we know as ruminants. Um, and they live up to thirteen thousand feet, so they're especially adapted hemoglobin rich blood is four, has four times as many red blood cells as humans. Um, so that allows them to live at those crazy elevations. So let's draw this guy now. This is, this is a challenge. Um, I'm gonna have to move, oh, sorry. I'm gonna have to move my camera here. There we go. Now, again, we got to get some proportions down. So it, the best thing to do is let's let's make sure we we put our okay. There's our ground where where his feet are going to be, and then and then we're going to work on some shapes. <laughs> um, and what I want to do, okay. First, I'm gonna I want to do like here's where the head's going to be. And I'm just doing a a, a triangle-y shape here. And then I'm gonna I wanna I'm gonna do some some just very rough shapes because at first I, I just kind of make sure I get the proportions right. Um especially for their for the 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 legs length and the um the body proportions. So let me just, so I just did those as kind of tests and now I'm going to measure, um, I'm gonna measure from the top ear down to where the first forward leg comes. And then from that joint, I'm gonna see, okay, the body is just slightly longer than that neck proportion. So as that comes down, there we go, like that then I want this, yeah, to be slightly longer. So I think I've, I'm, I'm happy with those proportions. And now how long are those legs? Um, let me measure that leg is about as long as from neck from there to there. So I'm, I'm going to give myself, it's, the legs are going to come down a little bit more. So you just see how those, um, just keep testing um, before you commit to any shapes. So now I can come in and, and do more, more shapes. So get that curve. Thin neck. Whoops, getting a bit exuberant here because I'm I'm kind of going going quick here. Okay, this is, comes down, and then we've got this this shape going here. And you know you've got shoulders here, and we've got belly here, and then kind of that hip here. You see how I I did that? So come down here. You get that back leg and he's kind of taking a step with that there. Pull that up. Yeah, I like that the, the butt relationship is good. Um, it's fun here. You, you're going to have mostly just super furry 
but remember the shoulder and then this is coming down here get that sh that kind of hawk shape and his toe is just kind of touching there um he's got you got the the ghost of the other leg is right behind there so and then this leg starts there comes down do it do a triangle thing we're just going to have to estimate here it's probably going to can't just a little and get our hoof there i think that's probably pretty good um because we've got our little grassy stuff going and then he's got this tail like that and just i just kind of reminding myself with these that it's fluffy not to make it you know super uh, rigid when i'm painting and sketching and then same with he's got like this almost has a main little like guard hairs sticking up so what you'll... kind of, what kind of hooves um they're they're uh camelid hooves so they're split thank you two parts Okay, so he's got, oops, this, um, let's get, there's that cheekbone coming up there, cheek, or jawbone, I should say, really tall ear, other ears coming up there. Got a fuzzy, fuzzy forehead. That nose, think, you know, more like a camel. Has two parts. And this lip thing. <laughs> like so. And then that eye is real important to get just right. So it starts directly below the ear. Oops, this ear needed to come down here. Eye starts, oops, um, sorry about that. Um, get that eye. I'm gonna sharpen this. I use a knife to sharpen. It's nice and quick, and I always have a knife with me. Um, so this eye, I just, they're really important to get right, and they're hard. There, I think that did it. Um, get rid of that. At least the placement's good. Um, so I think this guy is is good. Uh, then when we do our painting, we will want to mark that pattern there so that we get there. The, leave this light, leave that light, leave the inside light. Do, do partial light here. Um, so what does that look like? They kind of have a grayish face, don't they? So here we go again, all these cinnamon colored critters here. <laughs> it's like all we're doing.
make sure I, I try not to stray into or fill in the um, the light areas. Uh, probably would have been better suited to um, erase some of my pencil. Um, would would give me a, a, a little bit neater of a painting here. That's okay. There's a really dark tail. Interesting, huh? Trying to get that floofy, floofy thing going. And then if we have time later, that uh, those guard hairs, that mane, sort of calling it a mane. there see how you can I'm not like filling it in solid I'm trying to give it plenty of texture yeah I'm going to leave that for now uh, I'll do his gray face later and we can uh, do some even though it's not green in the um in the picture i am okay with just doing that that way add some brown there yay that's our guanaco um let's get this labeled and move on to our final species um this is fun And don't forget to come back and add your data, the information about the species, uh, the camelid native to South America. It um, must be pretty far south in South America to have the penguins. Yes. Um, well, those those penguins actually interestingly, um, ha. Well, we're about to find out um, something interesting here. Uh, one of the things we'll we'll do here is I'll come back and I'll add some shadow to make the belly fur stand out. Okay, and I'm just getting a little bit of the gray face in. Okay. Well, let's move on because I'm glad you pointed out the penguins because our next species and the last one in South America, yay, is the Magellanic penguin, which is what those were. And this is fun. I'm gonna share a quick video that we took when we were we were down at um at the Ushuaia. Turning up the sound. You can see them flying. And that stiff, stiff light. Nice. Fun. Okay. These are the Magellanic penguins, and they breed in coastal Argent coastal Patagonia, so Argentina, Chile, the Falkland Islands. So they do extend up the coasts, and yeah, they 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 can appear where the guanacos are. Um, so they're uh, like about thirty inches tall, and you know up to fourteen pounds. So a um, medium to smallish penguin compared to some of the big ones like the emperor. Very rigid wings, of course, helps them swim underwater. 
and they can dive 20 to 50 meters um, underwater to forage for prey. So pretty cool species. I'm gonna just do a really quick sketch here. Uh, we're over time, but that's okay. And I'm going to, you can do this one on the right. I wanna capture this really cool um, marking. So I'm gonna, I, I like this aspect of showing them coming out of the water since penguins do both. So what I'm going to do is uh, capture that so we can you know demonstrate so here's your your body but of course it goes all the way down here but the the water line is is here and then we have um the shape of of the the wing there and then the shape of the head so kind of a do a kind of an oval and let's you know you'll bring the the neck up there we go bring the head around and then those bills So those bills are very, let's let's take a quick look here. They're kind of hooked down on the side, or excuse me, on the on the lower mandible. So they're not proportionate. They're they're definitely a, a, a very specific shape there. Because they're you know they they feed on krill and small small fish really cool um let's get that head pattern in so you've got the the black coming around hey guys you might want to mute if you're going to blow your nose that was uh, a snake oh <laughs> bless you okay here we go and then the eye is right in the middle. There. Um, and then you've got your dark coming back. And then I'm going to go back here and just get my coloring. So well, this is our our water here. It's got his just bringing his wing up, and so you're gonna have the dark there. And then that will be all dark. And we've got a crescent. <laughs> Excuse me. Here. So we'll be sure to, to capture that. Really like these guys. I thought it was interesting why they, they were they were quiet. And then when the two came out of the water, it created this um cacophony of of noise uh, it's very interesting not sure why they had something to say oops spaniscus I always find it's easier to write them after I say it. Magellanicus.
and we'll just put the size about about 30 inches and 14 pounds max and they dive to 30 to 20 to 50 meters Nice. So I like the proportions on that. It came out. I'm super happy with the guanaco because that was really hard proportions. I'll work on the, the paintings um, throughout the day. Um, these, I oh, let me let me just make this bigger. And then I'll have you see if anyone wants to, to share. These all came out. I like the proportions. I think we're getting better and more confident as we go. Uh, the main wolf, certainly good proportions, and the eel is easy. So let me stop sharing. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And there we go. Light on the face. Um, that that was fun. Who? Let me see. Let me switch to gallery view. Um, let's see, where'd you guys go? View gallery. I'm going to unspotlight myself. Use the raise hand function. Let's look at a few of yours. Who wants to share what you worked on? There we go. JJ, hey, hello. How are you? Fantastic to see you. Hi, Roseanne. I'm Hi. so, so excited. Um, I just... one of our, yeah. Oh, sorry. I just want to say JJ is one of the Wild Wonder Volunteers moderators and she does an amazing job. So if you love Wild Wonder the online conference, JJ is one of the reasons it's so great. I'll probably see you there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited you're doing this. I love drawing animals, of course, and our nature journaling, but I really love Central and South America. So I, I'm so glad to be here uh how do i share this it's a really big sketchbook <laughs> you know look at your fantastic proportions and what you sure did great quick captures that's what did you use for paint paint or um, i did use my magello watercolor palette fantastic. great oh my gosh that's so their fun. colors are very vibrant and to get that beautiful frog, I did do a wash first so that all the colors would kind of blend into each other. Wonderful. Ah, yeah. but yeah. I had so much fun. Thank you. Fantastic. I know, doesn't it make you want to just head down there right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right, Valerie, let me spotlight you. There we go. Fantastic. Right. I did, did not try things all on one page and I used my my trusty food a pen. It's a very cheap food a pen. Sweet. But it works great even though it uses a lot of ink. So then I did these guys. Um, nice. I like how you know you just dedicated one page per animal really gave you a lot of leeway to add details. Yeah, it's it. It might be better to to do um, everything on a single page because it gets a little tricky when you have wet watercolor. <laughs> <It's true>. <laughs> <laughs> I that's I found that too. Um, definitely um, had to plan plan ahead on that one. Sweet, I, I enjoyed doing this. Nice. Look at how good everybody's doing. Wait, that's great. Yeah. Oh, and I like notice how she did like quick pen swaths to get the the pelage on both those animals so she didn't try to do every like hair but just enough to show oh yeah that's a furry beast yeah so i came in a few minutes late and didn't only half an eel but uh, that's right <laughs> i like that i think half an eel's good so um who else would like to go thank you um valerie let me see i'm gonna lower your hand um well, let's see. Well, thank you for everybody. That this was fun. And are you feeling like you're more confident now if you've been on several of these? 
Well, imagine we're only three of, of eight sessions in. So by the time we hit um, Oceania, we're all going to be just like, boom, this is easy. Um, so keep working on your own styles. I put in the um, the chat if you guys enjoy these and appreciate it. I, I always enjoy and appreciate um, the tip jar. And I'll send out the recording when I get this done. And it will be, um, I'll put the resources and, and everything on there too. And share with me if your your photos are of, of your pages and we can put those on the website and also feel free to head over into the community area. I'll put the link for that in the email I'll send out. But thank you, this was fun. I have had a lot of fun with these. It's, it's so addictive. Um, definitely to do these and that the research is tons of fun I have to watch it because I tend to go like into to rabbit holes and just like ah and then I realize I've just spent like three hours on one animal so <laughs> okay everyone thank you have a wonderful weekend and and anyone here who's coming to the writing workshop uh, we're going to be gone oh sorry Deborah mm. um no okay well we have a writing workshop coming up and then we've got the um Sonoran Desert Field Arts Boot Camp in April and I still have spaces I had a couple I had like three cancellations in the last week so if anyone wants to come to the Sonoran Desert to a wilderness location and nature journal for three days four days straight let me know. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Take care.